Hi, it's Kit with SV Jader. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to customize the motion path of an object and how to control its movement and timing along that path. I will animate these two race cars racing on the racetrack. For that, I will use the position animator, but I'll also work a little with the rotate animator for the drifting parts. I have all the elements of this racetrack inside of this group, which I'm going to lock, so I won't select anything from it by accident. I'll now open the library and add the first car I'm going to animate. I've made these two SVGs and I'll import the red car for now. Click on it. And now I have to place it on the racetrack. And select the transform tool to see the origin point and center it. I also want to scale it up just a little bit. And I'll scale it up to 20%. That will be 1.2 for both X and Y. And I'll also rotate it a little bit. There. Shift P to add the position animator. Now I'm going to put the playhead at 0.5 seconds and move the car to its next position, somewhere around here. To bend this path, hover above it until you see the arch symbol next to the cursor. Then drag it like this. Now let's see how it goes. Hold Shift when dragging the playhead for a smoother transition. So the motion of the car doesn't seem quite right. I need to make it auto-orient along the path. For that, click this icon next to the Rotate Properties. And now let's check it again. Much better. Still, I think I want to rotate it just a little bit more. There. Looks good enough. Now I need to go ahead and set the next point. I'll place the playhead here after another second. And now I have to place the car somewhere after this turn. And adjust the path using the bezier handles. Just like this. I'll try here to make the path as smooth as possible. Now let's have a look at it. Okay, I think it looks pretty good so far. Maybe a little extra adjustments will be needed later. So let's move on. I'll take the playhead to two and a half seconds and think of the next position for the car. I guess here will be good. Almost in the middle of the last turn of the racetrack. Again, carefully adjust the path to fit along the track. Grab this handle here and make sure the path won't drive the car off the track. I want it to go more in the right lane here. There. Now let's see how it goes. Not bad. I now want the next keyframe at three and a half seconds. And of course, drag the car somewhere towards the end of this last turn. Here. Same thing, adjusting the path. And I'd like to keep the car in the right lane again for now. So now I need to close the loop and bring the car at the same point from where it started. Another second further for the last keyframe. And drag the car near to its final position. Adjust the path. And now I'm trying to... Oops, I moved the origin point by accident. Let's go back a little bit so I can grab the end point. I have the snappings disabled for this because otherwise it will make the process more difficult as you can see. So I'll keep this option disabled. So now I will carefully place the endpoint over the start point and adjust the path to look continuous in order to obtain a good looking loop. There, now let's have a quick preview. Hit play. And this is how it goes. There seems to be a speed difference in that last turn. So I have to do a few more adjustments here, right on this portion right here. 
I need to speed things up a little, so for that I have to reduce the time between these keyframes. Okay, let's take a look. Better. So it looks like this loop doesn't really need to be more than four seconds. Therefore, I'll go to the timeline settings here and set the timeline to four seconds. There you go. Also, make sure you check the infinite option. I already have it checked. Now, let's check the animation using the preview option. Using the preview option will allow us to see the animation settings applied earlier. In this case, we can see how the loop looks. But you can also experiment with different animation triggers such as on click or on mouse over. One more thing I'd like to do for this animation is to make it drift a little in the turns. And for that, I'll need the rotate animator. Now I need to figure out where the drift should start from. I guess somewhere around here after entering the turn. And I'll place the first rotation keyframe here at 0.7 seconds. Now let's see where I should place the second one. Let's try here. Now I'm rotating the car to orient it towards the inside of the turn. And move ahead. A little more forward. And right about here, I'll end the drift by rotating the car in the opposite direction. Like this. Now let's keep going. And here, I'll duplicate the last keyframe. Right click and duplicate. Moving on now towards the last turn of the racetrack. I need to find the spot where I should place the keyframe. Here seems fine. From here I want the drift to start and now I want to see how long it should take. Okay, here. I'll rotate the car a little and let's check it out. Okay, maybe. Maybe the drift should last a little longer. So I'll bring the last keyframe here to three and a half seconds. Now, in this last portion, I want to make the car lose the stability a little bit. So I'll alternate a few rotations clockwise and counterclockwise. And I'll make it to recover its stability right before the finish line. And for that, I'm going to duplicate the first keyframe. Let's see the animation now. Okay. Now let's go to the preview to see the actual loop. So this is how to make a certain element animate along a custom path using the position animator and rotate to make it a little more interesting. I'm now going to add and animate a second car. But if you're here just to learn about move on path animations, you can stop watching the video here. I'm glad you stuck around. Here we go. I'm going to upload another SVG that I've prepared. This blue car. Click open. And just click on it to add it to the stage. Here it is. And I just have to place it where I want it to go now. Let's center the origin first, that is important, and apply a scale of 1.2 as I did for the red car. There. Now let's place it behind the red car. I want to make it race against the red car, so I must do the same thing over again. Add the position animator, and I'm going to drag the playhead to 0.5 seconds, right where the second position keyframe of the red car is. And now drag the blue car behind, right about here. Also, click on the Orient On path icon. Let's have a look. Oh, I must adjust the rotation a little bit, and why not the path as well? Now, let's take a look. Hmm, pretty interesting. Okay, let's go ahead to the next step. I'm going to drag the playhead to the position of the next keyframe of the red car. I'm trying to keep a sync here. I want to place the blue car behind the red car again and adjust the path. Of 
trying to make it as smooth as possible here. Whoops, undo. I'll just drag it a little bit over here. Let's check by dragging the playhead back. And then forward again. I want to make sure there is no collision between the two cars. I can add the rotation for the drifts now while advancing with the position animation. I can select these two rotation keyframes from the red car. Right click, copy, select the blue car, and paste. The rotation keyframes will be added starting from the position of the playhead. Let's check the drift now. Good. I'll use the copy paste keys now to copy this third keyframe here as well. Okay, let's move on another second. And I make sure to keep it in sync with the first car. Grab the blue car and drag it. And now I'm thinking maybe giving the blue car a little advantage here in the race. For that, I'll make it cut through the lane here, making the path less bended. But also make sure to keep it on the track. Let's check it now. Okay, it seems I got a little collision here. So I need to make some more adjustments. Let's check it again. Yeah, here's another collision here. No problem, I'm fixing it right away. Just carefully drag the path, and you can see the position of the car changing while I do it. Okay, a little more here. There. So here's the moment when the blue car tries to take the lead in the race, and it gets right next to the red car in the left lane. I'll now duplicate the last rotate keyframe at two and a half seconds. And drag the playhead right here to 3.2 seconds. Place the blue car at the end of the last turn. And adjust the path. I want to make sure it keeps the car in the left lane here. Okay. Hmm. Looks good. Now, copy these keyframes and paste them above. And this time, I'll manually rotate the car to make the drift look more spectacular. Okay, we're almost done here. Drag the car and place it over its initial position. Zoom in a little. I'm trying to place it the best as I can over that starting point. And do the adjustments here for the path. Let's take a look. Oh, there's another collision here. We can't have that. I guess I have to bring the blue car more to the left edge of the racetrack here and also make sure the end point is still over the start point. Let's take a look. The blue car almost runs off the track, but I think it looks even more interesting this way, so we'll keep it. Okay, no more accidents here. Let's go to the preview and take a look. So, this is it. It looks great. This is how you animate two cars racing an SVJator using position and rotate. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.